Hi, Merle. Good morning. Good morning, Emma. How are you? Good. Thank you. And excited to see all of you and kick things off this morning. So thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah. So we're talking about Moody's, which is in some ways all about risk. So what are the biggest risks when it comes to a company's people right now? Oh, what a great way to start us <laughs> off. Um, because as a chief people officer, I think people are pretty important. Um, We've been talking a lot at our company about how we are in an era of unprecedented exponential risk. And when you think about humans and their well-being and how do we set people up to thrive, we are very focused at Moody's on making sure we build the right culture through the right values to make the purpose of our business come true in a way that enables people to live a life and actually have meaning in the biggest part of their day, which is their day at work. Mm -hmm. And you know, on that note, you've said that investing in every relationship is a key value for you all, but what does that look like day to day? Yeah, so when I rejoined Moody's two years ago, a thing that I realized was it's this really storied brand that's over a hundred years old. And at the same time, it's a really small company with this incredibly talented group of people. And we didn't have a rallying cry for who we truly are and why that truly matters and what makes it special to be part of our company. So we went on a journey. And at the same time, we had invested $8 billion over the last six years to really build out our business offerings around risk. And so we put the mirror on ourselves and said, we're investing all this to provide to our customers. What do we do to provide for our people the roadmap of the best of who we really are and what we really want every person to represent when they're representing Moody's brand? And we called that our values journey. And we did a lot of work to figure out who are we? And we asked all our employees. We did surveys, we did interviews, we did focus groups. And what we really learned is that the thing that's most special about Moody's and the promise we make to each other and everyone we interact with is our primary value, which is invest in every relationship. And what that really meant to us is me sitting here with you, me talking with you, me engaging a vendor, uh, a colleague, how I show up, what I do, matters and the way I do it matters just as much. So that value was our cornerstone value. And we really wanted the words to match the song. And we wanted to make sure it was authentic and real for us. And so we've worked very hard at taking invest in every relationship and bringing it to life. You know, when you talk about this work you did internally to figure out who Moody's really is, do you feel like that matches how Moody's is perceived by outsiders and by the public? Or are there two different uh, perceptions of the yeah. company? I always say that Moody's is this incredible group of lovable nerds that the world doesn't really know about. They know about us through the opinions we provide, and that's really by design. And as we grow and proliferate more and more, I hope that our customers and our vendors and our employees and our prospective and former employees would say that because I know that's what I hear consistently. And I know as we sort of try to do more with one voice and one set of words to communicate who we are, we're working really hard to make sure that that is what the market sees and feels and experiences because it's our truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's just take a moment to quickly clarify for anyone who's not familiar, sure. what does Moody's do? What are the services that you offer? That is a great question. So we are a 115-year-old startup. That's what I'd call us. And what we do um, is we provide information, research, and insights to help our customers decode risk and unlock opportunity. Our storied brand is our credit rating agency, which means that we provide credit opinions. But now over 50% of our revenue comes from research, data, insights, and decision solution SaaS products that we provide our customers to help them make really good decisions about the risks in their companies. And that could be anything from risks associated with climate change, risks associated with commercial real estate, risks associated with cybersecurity, risks associated with bad actors. And we wanna make sure that we are providing the fullest suite of information 
to help people understand their risks and protect against them and also unlock the opportunities in them. Yeah, so you're putting out a lot of information and you know, you've know you said this before that that really requires trust and building trust for people to believe in all this information you're putting out. You're advising them on really complex issues. So how do you build that trust to make sure your information is uh, received well by your clients and by the public? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that our foundational value, so again, I feel like what we did when we built our values is we tried to articulate the best of who we are and what we expect. We also created an EVP, which is our promise to the people who join us on the journey at Moody's. Um, and our foundational value is honor trust through integrity. And so we work very hard as a business to make sure that everything we do, we do to the highest quality. And just like in reporting, you do your best to get it as right as you possibly can. We do the same thing in our business. We are working really hard to make sure we are providing opinions and transparency and information to the market that is accurate and true. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, you know, you have the role chief people officer and, you know, many people in this room probably make these connections. But if you are talking to a wider audience, people might not necessarily be thinking about the role of the chief people officer and some of these issues you're talking about around really kind of high-level company brand issues. So what is the role for Moody's or more broadly at any business between HR and the people function and brand and the rest of the business? I think that when HR or a people organization, we rebranded from HR to people very intentionally because we didn't want HR to be perceived as a back office personnel function. We knew that truly we have a SaaS business but our product, everything about what we do is our people. And it's how our people show up and what they do in moments that matter that defines our business. So we felt like rebranding ourselves to people was really saying the crux of our business is our human capital. And um, to be an effective human capital function means understanding your business, and driving activity that reinforce the things that matter. And for us, that's trust and relationships. So in our people organization, we work very hard to make sure that we are, uh, everything we do throughout what we call a talent life cycle, so everything from who we hire, how we think about growing our talent, how we give people opportunities to expand and grow, how we reinforce the rules and what we expect of our people, all of that. And, how we provide benefits, um, how we think about fairly and equitably compensating. All those things, they matter in that value proposition of building a place that you can trust and rely on and that can trust and rely on you. And so by doing that interconnected thing, we're really hopeful that we're making true what our business is and that in turn helps our customers have confidence in us because our people are mirroring what we are providing to them. Interesting. So you left Moody's, as you mentioned, and then came back. Yeah. Um, how do you think employers feel about boomerang employees, so-called, right now? Is there a stigma against them? Are the tides changing? Yeah. I think that some of the best prospective talent is our past talent. We're really lucky at Moody's. We have a really high rate of boomerangs. We have like double what the market has, they say like 4% of any workforce in a corporation is boomerangs. We are at like 7%. So we're very proud of the fact that when, even when people become our alumni, they stay connected to us and sometimes they want to come back. For me, leaving was really hard. And I can honestly say I was leaving to go rebrand myself and um, try something very different than what I had been doing. But I'll never forget the day I came back and the day I got the call to consider coming back because um, I was working at WeWork and it was an incredible experience with incredible people. Um, but one day I got a call from Moody CEO and he said, and we've known each other for years and years and years, and he said, hey, I hear you're doing some really interesting things over at WeWork. Can we talk about them? And we just started catching up and talking and he was like, wow, that's really exciting. Like that would be very interesting things for Moody's to consider. Would you talk to us? And we started really a six month conversation that culminated in 
my deciding to return in this role. And my second day at work, there was a town hall and we were in a huge auditorium, something like this, and there was many thousands of people and I knew a lot of them because I'd been at Moody so long and I'll never forget that feeling of sort of coming back into the room and it's like joining your, rejoining your family or like coming back to your college reunion where everyone knows you and cares about you and is so just happy to see you. And I felt this overwhelming sense of like inclusion and welcomeness from the Moody's community. And I will never forget that moment because to me, gosh, I wish every person going to work could feel that included and welcome for who they genuinely are because I really felt it in that moment. Yeah. So as you mentioned, your detour was at WeWork. Yeah. Did it not feel like a family over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It did in a crazy way. But um, WeWork was really different. They were trying to do something that I actually think connects incredibly to what From Day One is trying to talk about today. What I felt like they were trying to do and why their mission meant so much to me was I felt like they were trying to solve the problem of loneliness in society. And, and you were there at an interesting time. You were there yeah. post-scandal, if that's correct. Um, what did you learn from your time at WeWork? So I was there um, three months before we flipped our S1, right before all the scandal started, mm -hmm. through the scandal and out the other side. I learned that really good people can do things quite imperfectly. And some people that don't have as clear a view of what values and what relationships mean make some really bad mistakes. But we had this incredible core of people team talent that really, I mean, talk about HR sort of leading the way. We stripped down the company and we tried to save it and rebuild it in service of this incredible mission of giving people who are working, whether you're an entrepreneur or a Fortune 500 company, a place to go. And we really authentically believed in that mission. And we tried really hard to recast who the company was to honor that mission in how we lived with our workforce. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, of course, Moody's is also a company and a brand that has been through its own share of challenges, especially during the financial crisis. Like from your perspective, um, it, sitting in these two roles, what are what have you learned about the role of like a people organization in supporting the business and supporting employees through something like that? Yeah, I think that there is nothing that is second to living your truth and always knowing what your North Star is and making sure that to the very, very best of your ability as an HR function, you are honoring that trust through integrity by focusing on what's the right thing to do. And the right, right thing might not mean the right thing for any one person or any one situation, but you always have to keep integrity at the forefront of what you do, otherwise you might wobble. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So let's talk a little bit about just kind of um, employee trends at the moment. What are the top three things that you're hearing that employees want from their employers right now? Yeah, I think that number one, there's a huge focus on purpose. And part of what makes people feel great when they go to work to every day, for me today, um, is that they feel like they're connected to doing something that matters to the mission of a company that matters. So I hear a lot about how do we tell the story of what we're doing to our people and to each job so they feel like they have a purpose and a reason um, for getting up and doing what it is they have to do. The number two thing that I think is really important, right, especially right now, is psychological safety. How do I create a space, how do we we're a community. How do we create a space that makes everyone feel welcome and cherished as their authentic self? And I think that is really important to doing that operating with integrity. Because if you feel safe, you can call out something that feels off. If you don't feel safe, you are not going to call it out with the same confidence and comfort. So that's super important to me. The third thing is really focusing on what does well-being mean in terms of a whole life experience? We're coming out of COVID. We're sort of back to the new normal of what it means to work. If you work in what used to be a five-day-a-week office, 
And for us, we've adopted this purpose first way of working because we recognize work is just one component of your life. And no one's life is the same every day and no job has the same needs and wants. And it's incumbent on us as a company, we believe, to create a space that enables people to achieve the goals of the company while living a life that is as rich as they want it to be. So having a purpose first way of working, that sort of was a third pillar that was very, very important to us to get right in service of our people. Mm -hmm. What about our you know, youngest employees, Gen Z, um, entry level employees? Um, do they want those same things or are there unique things that entry level workers are looking for right now? I'm going to ask you to, to, I'm going to flip that question back to you because I'm curious what you would say. You're going to know much more about Gen Z than me. Um, I think in some ways, what I love about what I see of, of Gen Z is they want what they want and they're not ashamed to call it out and they want it really fast and, um, but they also want to live their life. And I think that's not so different than what any other generation has really wanted. I just think there is a plainness about the way I see um, earlier career talent calling it out. And that's really refreshing because when someone asks you honestly and directly for what they want, it's really easy to have a conversation about, okay, how do we get you there? Mm -hmm. But what do you think? I mean, I think it's interesting, especially when you look at not just what talent wants, but the flip side. I mean, we see trends like young workers documenting their layoffs on TikTok. Like, is that something you've seen? And how do you just manage through something Why like that? Why do you think they do that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm curious what everyone <laughs> in the audience thinks. We'll have to convene after to discuss this. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's this openness and transparency. And um, yeah. that's a big part of it. But yeah, I mean, one of the other big trends we're seeing right now is, of course, some shifting norms around DEI with legal challenges uh, popping up in various ways. Um, how has that affected you and what's your view of the future of the DEI landscape? Yeah, so before I joined, I rejoined Moody's in February of 22. And one of the first things that we spoke about, we, had, we got a new officer and we spoke about the title of that job in 22. And the conversation that we were having at the time was all the elements of DE&I are vitally important. But to me and to our head of inclusion, it starts with inclusion. And the reason it starts with inclusion is because you can't have a place where diverse talent feels safe if it's not also inclusive and welcoming and cherishing. So at that time we rebranded to the Office of Inclusion. You did a lot of rebranding. We did. We've done a lot of rebranding. And we put out a video actually a month ago on our on Moody's.com called Stand for Inclusion. And what we did in that video is really show vignettes of all different kinds of people at Moody's who look different, who have different experiences, who come from different backgrounds. And we talk about that mosaic of different people is what creates the richness, frankly, of our business. It gives us the broadest perspective of insights, but it also lets every person know, no matter where you come from, you are safe here and you are welcome here. And so I feel like the challenges presented by that affirmative action decision, which actually has nothing to do with employment, um, haven't really touched us because it hasn't changed what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So inclusion is safer territory than other uh, parts of DEI affected by. I think it's just action. more real. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we don't have that much time left, but maybe we can end on, you know, if you had to pick one or two trends in people in HR and employment that you're watching right now, what do you have your eye on? So what I'm really watching now is how do we use Gen AI and how do we identify artificial intelligence and the people who know how to use AI and Gen AI to empower and improve the quality of what we do. And um, there's, there's an expression that I've been hearing a lot lately. I don't know if you've been hearing this too. You're not gonna get replaced by Gen AI. You're gonna get replaced by someone who knows how to use Gen AI. And I actually do believe that. And so I believe it's our job as a people function and talk about where learning becomes really, really important. It's our job to give every person at the company the opportunity to upskill in that space because that's the future. It's we're gonna get faster, we're gonna get more accurate, we're gonna get better.
because there's a tool that's gonna enable us to harness all this information. And so let's bring everyone on that ride with us. Yeah, well, we could have a whole other conversation about that. So yeah. we'll talk about it next time. Thank I you so much, it. Meryl. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Thank everyone. you.